Keyword research is the absolute foundation of SEO. We work out what your perfect customers are actually searching for. But those are people who make big mistakes with it. For instance, targeting really competitive keywords that they've got no hope of ranking for, or relying on metrics like keyword difficulty to assuming these are accurate metrics. Now, traditionally, what I used to do with keyword research was actually go through keywords, especially from scoping competitors, and dig down to see the individual domain rating of each competing site on page one. And that would give me an idea of how competitive a site really is. Because you could look at a zero keyword difficulty keyword or keyword difficulty of one, and you might find that the actual pages don't have many backlinks to the ranking, but those pages could be on a DR8090 website, and keyword difficulty wasn't taking that into account. So I found it much better to go through at a microscopic level each keyword and see are there lower, lower DR competitors on the same search result, and therefore am I likely to rank for it? But a few months ago, Ahrefs actually brought out a new feature where you can do this in bulk. So I always say there's opportunities in every niche, no matter how competitive it is. And one of the biggest mistakes I made in SEO and lots of other people make in SEO is assuming that a lower price equals lower competition. So it's very easy to start an Amazon website and think you're just going to sell some sort of simple everyday item. And yes, you won't make much commission out of it, but it probably won't be that competitive. Generally, I found it's the other way around, and some of my most successful websites have actually had very little traffic, uh, but have been in uncompetitive niches that generate really big affiliate commissions. So generally, I'm a big advocate for ignoring a lot of the hype around topical authority and massive informative websites full of info content, which you know, maybe use banner ads, something like that. I much prefer smaller websites and fighting through to compete on uh, really good high volume, high value keywords because just a couple of sales might totally pay off. It takes the same resources to sell an expensive product as a cheap product. And you'll find that a lot with SEO. But the good news is with taught techniques like the one I'm going to show you, you can dig down and find the lowest competition opportunities, whatever your niche is. All in public. I can't give the real gold away just because I don't want Google knowing. So what I do in my videos is each of my videos that comes out, my uh, insider ranking revelations newsletter subscribers receive a little snippet of the sort of next level advanced tactics, which I can't go into in the video. So how you actually avoid major pitfalls, and that's a top 10% knowledge that doesn't get talked about in public that can really transform your results. So I don't repeat these. I did a tutorial the other day on CTR Booster where my subscribers received about six points, and uh, in-depth bullet points talking about the right proxies, right hosting, right methodology to make sure you get results and you avoid risk. So. Those are the things you can benefit from by signing up to the Ranking Revelations newsletter. And this public case study is going to be the same thing. The case study really is going to be public, but there are going to be some additional details that I can't simply blast out to everyone on YouTube, especially as my competitors might see. So go to seojesus.com, sign up for the Ranking Revelations newsletter, and you'll get the premier next level insights that I don't share in public. So I've just done a video on how I'm actually going to get some initial link power into this site, given that we've got a domain rating of zero. So I've already had a couple of agency websites in the past, and I want to try and transfer some of that power into this site. And now we need some content. So I'm going to use mass autoblogging.ai content to start off with. I always talk about using bulk AI tools early on and then seeing what ranks, and then you can go in and improve those pages. So lots of case studies out there for mass AI content. Most people are focusing on low competition info keywords that don't actually drive a lot of revenue. So that's perfectly fair enough, build a you know, 2000 page website and use banner ads. Uh, but what I really want to try here and what I'm seeing there's the gap in the market is promoting, uh, using autoblogging AI to actually promote high ticket products and services. This is a method I advocate across my channel where yes, you could build a blog uh, and get you know, a couple of hundred a month in banner ads. But what if you, you've got some area of expertise, something like that, some service you can provide or you know someone who can provide that service and you can rank for that traffic, get that traffic and then sell those leads, either take on those leads yourself or sell them to a business partner. And some of these leads can be worth thousands of dollars. So I much prefer that strategy, go for a smaller website, less content, more links and really focus on ranking for really good commercial keywords because a lot of them aren't actually that competitive. I've got some projects in local services, in finance where there's not really that much competition once you go niche. And yes, niche might mean lower traffic, but if you're serving the right product and we're talking a commission of about $300 per sale, 
I don't care if I'm only going to sell 100 of those a month because 100 times 300, that's a very comfortable uh, company, a very comfortable business and a good company to run. So exhibit A, let's actually rank my SEO agency for some SEO agency terms. So first of all, I'm going to go to semrush.com as a competitor and scrape it for keywords. So we're going to go to top pages. SEMrush, they've had a big content push lately. Apparently they're doing a lot of programmatic stuff as well. So there'll be a rich mine for keywords. We can see lots of Indian traffic here. They're actually ranking for Pornhub.com, <laughs> trending websites. So in Hungary, they are number one result for Pornhub.com. Interesting. Anyway, let's not get distracted. I'm just focusing on the United States. So you've got 100,000 pages here. Uh, this is going to be challenging. Let's try and filter this down a bit. So I'm going to go for keyword and let's go with SEO four. And let's just see if there's some niches there. So I'm talking SEO for lawyers, SEO for dentists. So SEO for small business, SEO for blogger. This is great. So I want these. So how many have we got here? 241. That's much more manageable. And these are really good. Uh, yeah, local SEO for lawyers, SEO for e-commerce, SEO for Amazon Web Store, SEO for automotive agency. So let's grab all of those. So I'm just going to export that. Now the main deliverable I want to focus on is actually links. So let's do another keyword filter. So let's do backlinks uh, and links and it can be any rule so either of these two so let's see if we can get backlinks for x website 400 pages check backlinks build backlinks internal links anchor links outbound links bad backlinks canonical links so this all looks pretty good Let's sort by traffic value, just to make sure we're seeing the most valuable keywords first. So they will be the more service-based keywords. Backlinks Builder, that's a good one. Backlinks Outreach, that's one of us. .gov backlinks, this is more like it. And now some of these have got quite low volume, so let's put in a minimum volume of 100. Hundred eighty four. So that's actually clean this list up a lot. Do no follow links help SEO? This is more like it. PR links. Okay, so let's export that. So now I've downloaded a list of uh, good keywords for my competitors. I want to actually find out how competitive they are and go after the low hanging fruit because there's a lot of volume here. There's very high number of keywords so it can make life easier by simply screening them to work out which are the easiest to go after so i've got several spreadsheets open from them. so i'm going to simply go through and take the current top keyword and paste that into the ahrefs keyword explorer and repeat that for each of my downloads When you reach the end, don't press enter because it will go through. So I simply put in a comma because Ahrefs reads basically the comma as separating two keywords. So same again here, not pressing enter. I just use a comma and then control V and we search. So what this has done is given us all those, all the keyword data for those keywords that we got from the top pages report. 
But now what I want to do, which you can't do in the top pages report, is filter by lowest DR. This is quite a new feature from Ahrefs, it's only about six months old, but it is really helpful. I use it all the time. So basically you can select, what I normally do when I'm doing keyword research is I ignore keyword difficulty and have a look at the actual search result and work out what's my DR and which keywords have got similar DR competitors on page one of Google, because I'm therefore in the same sort of league, I can probably rank for those keywords. So that used to be a manual process for my team, checking by hand each individual keyword. Now we can do that in bulk. So what I want to do, I've already got SEO Jesus up to a DR of 22. You can see my video on how I did that, got up to a DR of 22 within two days, and it's quite easy to do. But now what I want to do is actually look at the next step. So this entirely depends on your niche. If you're quite a low DR site, and you're in a niche with lots of low DR sites, you maybe want to say, I want a um, keyword, I want a DR of five in the top five. But obviously the SEO niche is high ticket, it's valuable traffic, because I want every single uh, user I can get, but it's also quite competitive. So I'm going to be quite generous with myself and go with a DR of 40 in the top 10. So you can choose top five or top 10. If you want really easy keywords, you can put DR zero in the top five, but how many keywords are you actually going to get uh, from that? Probably not very many, and they're probably not going to be very good keywords. So 40 in the top 10 tells me that at least that's kind of within the realms of possibility for me. So when this happens, we've currently got 542 keywords. In fact, let's go with 45. Let's be a bit more ambitious. Let's see how much this number drops when I click show results. So we've got 542 keywords, which I've taken from competitors, 155,000 search volume per month. But let's see, I, want, I just want the, the easy keywords. So how much is that actually going to drop? 310, so actually less than half. And from this, there's still some really good search terms out there. If I sort by CPC, I can also see the most valuable keywords. So you can see Magento SEO experts, local SEO for lawyer. So I'll show you exactly what this report has done. If I open this in a new tab, then traditionally what I would do is scroll down and say, I'm a DR22. I can probably get that up to 40, 45 within a reasonable time frame. So if there are domain ratings below 40 on page one, then I know this is a search term I can rank for. So here we have a 36. Otherwise it's pretty competitive. Um, but the fact there's a 36 there, that gives me some hope. So I'm already at 22, I can get up to 36. That's not a guarantee of page one, but someone else has done it, so why can't I do it? Otherwise we've got a few 60s. Uh, it's only really when you get all of these in the 90s, like a really competitive finance uh, term, that you tend to not have much hope without a very big budget. So from this, I've now got a good list of keywords that I can actually target so the next thing I want to do is watch out for any duplication because I've done uh, multiple exports with this and some of those could be overlapping. So you can already see local SEO for lawyer and lawyer SEO expert. They're kind of the same keyword. This one's specifically local. So I imagine they probably would stay as separate keywords. We've already opened that one. So let's have a look at this one. If you get two close keywords like this, then the answer is to look at the both the search results and work out how different are they. If they're very different, so pretty much different websites, then you want a separate article for each. Uh, if they are the same websites, then the same keyword, you only want one article. So in this case, we have Clio, LawRank, SEMrush. And then here we have Rankings, Law Firm, SEO, Hennessy. Yeah, they're pretty different websites. So in fact, one of them's got DR4 in the top three, so that's a great opportunity. So there we go, that's two separate pages. What I normally do at this point is actually export the list and put it into ChatGPT and ask it to remove overlapping search terms. But in this case, I don't think we need to worry about that. So I'm now going to do another export. So I've got my final list. And now we're going to head to autoblogging.ai.